What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So I'm redoing my tutorial here on how to get your PS4 game back ports installed and running on a jailbreakable PS5. So I did a video on this before, but there's some automated scripts that make this much, much easier. So I wanted to go ahead and redo this. So essentially the problem we have at the moment is new games, new PS4 games that require a backport patch cannot be installed in their current form on a jailbreakable PS5 because unlike the PS4, we don't have a spoofer to spoof the kind of SDK version to allow the base package to be installed and then the backport patch on top. And because of that, we can't install the base package on the PS5 and therefore we can't then install the update package to backport it. So that's the issue we have at the moment. The fix for this is to merge the game and the backport patch into one package file and then install that and then that will allow it to install and run. And that's how I got Assassin's Creed and Resident Evil 4 running. So in order to do this, first of all, we need to load the exploit. So we're gonna head on to the internet browser. We're gonna head over to ES7IN1.site, Echo Stretch's seven and one host. And we're gonna go over to PS5 and select Slayer's Go V 4.03 bin. So the Slayer's Go V exploit, select that option. And then we're gonna load the option for jailbreak plus kernel stuff or case stuff, select that option and let it try and run the exploit. And then we get PS5 case stuff successfully loaded. You're all set. Once that pops up, you can press the PS button to close out of the browser. And then you'll be able to launch your fake packages, your PS4 fake packages. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete Assassin's Creed Mirage so that I can show you the backporting process here. So we're gonna switch on over to our computer. Okay, so on my computer here, we've got the Assassin's Creed Mirage package here. This is the game package and then the backported update package for 1.02. We need to merge these both into one package file. Now there's actually a bunch of different tools that can allow you to do this. One of them is Marcus 95s new package merging tool for fake packages. So that was released just yesterday. That's one option. Another option is the PS4 AIO tool, not my PS4 AIO tool my multi uh, mod tool for the PS4. This is a different tool that's also called PS4 AIO by Jason, I think. And uh, so that's one option as well. The one that I would highly recommend that you use though is one called PS4 Tools V40, which is basically the successor to Jason's PS4 AIO tool. And it is generally the easiest tool to use. So essentially I found it here on PSX Hacks. I'll have a direct link to it as well in the description. But what you're gonna to want to do here is once you download PS4 tools and extract it somewhere on your computer, make sure you extract it to a hard drive that has enough storage space available for extracting the packages. And then we're gonna go into PS4 tools and we're gonna run the run.cmd and that's going to set up the context menu. So once that's done, now there's two reasons why I think this is the best tool to do this. One is ease of use. Once you run that script, all you have to do is highlight both packages, the game package and the backported update package. And then when you right click, you'll have this new option on your right click menu called PS4 tools. So if you mouse over it, you'll get all of these different package options. And one of them is merge game plus update. That's the option you want to select. Do not do the remaster version because that will create a different package type that cannot be installed standalone. So you want one that can be installed standalone, which is the merge game plus update. So you're gonna select that option and then let it do its thing. And that's basically it. That's all you have to do is click that one option and it's gonna go ahead here and unpack the game. It will then unpack the update. It will then merge the files together and then it will build the package file, the standalone package. Now there's another reason why I recommend using this tool because after my last video, CYB1K pretty much called me out saying, hey, you didn't rename a folder properly, the image zero folder where all of your extracted files are located if you build the GP4 project file using image zero as the folder name, it will actually not generate the GP4 file quite correctly for every game because you're supposed to name the folder, the title ID of the game with dash app next to it. That needs to be the name. And then the GP4 generator, gen GP4 recognizes that name and will generate the appropriate GP4 file. That's one of the issues from my last video. So I went ahead and checked the other automated tools to see if they were renaming the folder correctly as CYB1K specified. And it turns out most of them don't. The PS4 AIO tool does not. It just calls it game-app instead of the title ID. 
and also the one from Marcus just names it the title ID, but you have to type in the title ID and then it will name the folder that, uh, which isn't correct because that doesn't have the dash app next to it. So the GP4 still generates the wrong type of GP4 file. So that is the problem with those other automated tools. This is the only tool that does it correctly. As you can see here, if we scroll up to where it was actually adding the files, you can see the folder name is correct. It's the title ID of the game dash app. That's what it should be. None of the other automated tools are doing that properly. So that's another reason why you should be using this tool compared to the other options. Now the script is not done when you see this create image process finished with warnings. The script is still running. There you go. Now it's done. So once it actually says finished like this and press any key to continue, that's when you know it has finished the process. So we can press any key and it is done. Now another reason why you should use this tool is the fact that it also creates the game fix info. And that is because the game is merged into this one package. That's the only package you need is this one, the main package file. You can see 27.7 gigs, which is the game plus the update combined into one file. However, when you install this file, it will still show as version 1.00, even though the game update is on 1.02. So what this smaller package does is it's literally just there to update the game version. So the game version shows up correctly on the home screen. That's all that package is for. So you don't have to install that package, but if you want the correct game version showing up, you can install this one as well. So obviously I've already gone ahead and built these packages to the root of my USB. If you haven't, copy it to the root of a USB drive and then you can install it on the PS5. So we're gonna eject the USB, plug it into the PS5, preferably plug it into one of the back USB ports because those are the higher speed USB ports. It'll install faster if you have a high speed USB drive. Okay, and if we switch back over here to our PS5, we go over to settings, go down to debug settings, game, and package installer. And we're gonna install the Assassin's Creed Mirage, the new one that we just built, our merged version. So we're gonna install that onto the PS5. Okay, there it goes. It says ready to play. So it is installed properly as you can see. But of course, even though the 1.02 update is installed, it just shows up as 1.00. So all we need to do to fix that is we can install, again, we don't have to fix that. It's not necessary, but if you want the game version showing up properly, you can install this 1.02 update fix. And with that installed, if we go to information, it now shows correctly that it's on version 1.02. So let's go ahead and launch it and it should run just fine. Backported successfully and there it is, game is running. So that in my opinion is by far the easiest way. You just highlight the packages, right click, merge them, does everything for you. It renames the, the game dump folder correctly, unlike the other scripts. Plus it also, of course, generates the game fix version so that you can get the proper game update showing, game version showing on your home menu. And as you can see, it is installed just fine here and it says we're on patch 1.02. So we have everything up and running as it should be. Another issue we have right now is that DLC is not working when you install it. So none of your downloadable content, your add-ons, your expansions, none of that stuff works right now. Now, CYB1K has basically managed to kind of integrate everything, I think, into the app package so that you can get DLC working. And he's working on releasing his first PS5 specific backport for PS4 games still, but it's specifically for Resident Evil 4 Remake. So CYB1K is going to be releasing a backported version. I'm not sure if the audio is fixed in his version, but he will have all the DLCs included because he's figured out a way to kind of include it all into I think the game package so that all of the DLC will be added. So that's something to look forward to as well. And maybe I'll have a tutorial in the future about porting DLC over, we'll see. We'll see how that goes, but that is it for now. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.